magandang, magandang, magandang gabing sa lahat. So once again, my name is Remy and today we're gonna talk about taxation. More particularly, the tax update on the new Bayanihan Heal As or Recover As One Act. Okay? So, before we start, gusto ang malaman. Si dito nag-attend ng lecture ko dati. Sa, may nag-attend ba dito ng lecture ko dati sa French Benefits? Meron ba dito? Dito sa Zoom o kaya sa ano? Sa Facebook Live. Hello! So by the way, sa mga rules ko dito is gusto ko interactive ha? As in, gusto ko mag, ano kayo, mag-comment kayo dyan or mag-chat kayo. Kasi throughout this lecture, I'm gonna be asking for your opinions on some of the provisions of the Bainihan 2. Gusto mo kung malaman mga thoughts nyo. Okay? Kaya huwag kayo mahiya na mag-chat dito sa Zoom and pati rin sa FB Live. So again, I'll be monitoring the comment section of the FB Live para sa mga iba't ibang ano, feedback nyo. Okay? Ayan. Bakit nagkaroon tayo ng Bayanihan? What is the rationale behind the Bayanihan 2 Act? Why does Congress need to pass this act? Of course, dahil po sa COVID-19. COVID-19 is yung isa sa mga pinakamalaking problema tayo dito. Isa sa mga pinakamalaking problema na experience natin ngayon dito sa ating bansa. Kaya itong Bayanihan Act, this is one of the reasons, is it is one of the ano, things or, or the action the government did in order to help combat this virus. Kaya ang title niya is the Bayanihan Recover as One Act. Yung huling law, which is Bayanihan 1, it is called the Bayanihan Heal as One. But this time, it is now Bayanihan to Recover as One. Ngayon, I want to ask all of you this sa FB Live tsaka sa Zoom. Ano yung mga iba't ibang problema na nag-arise na sa COVID-19? Ano yung problems na face natin ngayon dahil sa virus na ito? Okay? I want to hear from you dito sa participants sa group chat tsaka dito po sa FB Live. Sana po may magano may mag-reply. Okay, I'm waiting for some response. Ayan, may nagsabi, bumagsak ang, ang ating ano, eco economy. Ano pa? Yan lang ba ang ano natin? Ang problems na na-face natin ngayon? Ano pa? Yung ba't ibang problems? <laughs> Wait lang, medyo nag-delay. Pili ko medyo nahuhuli ang nga doon sa FB Live. Ano guys, sa Zoom, 18 naman kayo eh. Sige na. Wag, wag, wag na kayo mahiya ha. Ayan, may nag -ano, Yung utang po ng Pinas, trillion na. Yes. Dahil sa iba't ibang measures ng government para ma-fund yung, ano, yung buy ni Han Juan. Ayan, may nagsabi ng unemployment sa FB Live. Ano pa? Ayan. So I think yung iba na ihiya na. I think iba na medyo na ihiya pa na ko ano magsabi sige. Ang mga problema na na-experience natin ngayon dito sa ano sa COVID-19 is first syempre is a demand for mass testing. Dito gusto, gusto sobrang dami gusto mag-demand ng mass testing. Recently, I think narinig ng news na may naglumapit sa Supreme Court para mag-file ng ano writ of ano rate of mandamus to compel the government to conduct mass testing. Pero unfortunately, na-junk ng, ano, ng Supreme Court. The answer is why? Kasi the court is a resort of ano, uh, it, it, it is the, the remedy of last resort. Okay? Pag wala ng remedy, sa court ka nalapit. Na-deny yung petition of mandamus for mass testing, na-deny ng Supreme Court because of the doctrine of of exhaustion of administrative remedies. Sabi nila, bawa ka muna sa korte, lumapit ka muna sa mga government agencies at dyan ka maghanap ng solusyon. Pag wala, sa akin ka lumapit. Ako yung pinakahuling ano, ako, ako yung huling tao na dapat mong lagpitad para ma makaroon ng mass testing. Okay? Ano ba iba pang problema? Yung healthcare workers. Ano yung ba't ibang problems na face ng healthcare workers? Overwork. Sobrang pagod na sila. Ilan days na sila nag-anong tatabaw sa hospital na more than 8 hours. Sobrang pagod na sila. Underpaid. 
ang dami ng sakripisyo na ginagawa nila para sa bansa natin. Pero, ang liit ng kapalit. Ano pa? Lack of supplies. Lack of manpower. In other words, kulang. Yan yung main problem dito. Sobrang nihirapan ng healthcare workers dahil kulang sila sa manpower, kulang sa supplies, kulang sa sweldo, and mga kung ano-ano pa. Dito, minsan nung kulangin tayo ng supplies para sa mga PPEs natin. Ngayon, hindi lang mga healthcare workers ano nung ng problema. Mas kaya mga every normal Filipino. Dahil nga sa bumagsak ng ekonomiya, dahil sa unemployment, Dami ng unemployed dito. Dami ng walang trabaho. Dami ng wala ng source of income. Diba? Kaya anong solution dito ng gobyerno? Ayuda. Yung SAP. And syempre, sa pag-close ng mga ibang businesses natin. Isa to sa mga reasons kung bakit ano, lumo, ano, biglang or lalo lumala ang problema natin sa COVID-19 dahil sa closure ng business. Nag-slow down nating economy. Yung ibang tao, wala ng pera, wala ng income. And syempre, lalong lalo na ngayon, and I think majority of you who are watching today is experiencing problems na tungkol sa online learning. Some of us are really, really fortunate na pwede tayong mag-ano, comfortable tayo sa online learning. Some of us have done necessary equipment, we have laptops, computers, and stable internet. Paano yung iba? Paano yung nasa probinsya? Paano yung nasa ano yung nasa far flung area sa hindi maabot ng ano ng internet connection at signal ng phone natin? Paano mga walang pambili ng laptop, ng tablets o ng tawag ng ed devices? Lahat yan ay yung, ay yung problem na experience natin ngayon dito sa Pilipinas. But we must remember, COVID-19 is a worldwide problem. Ano kayong problem? Imagine nyo, ano kayong problem na experience sa iba't ibang countries? Ito yung experience natin sa Pilipinas. How about other countries? Diba? Imagine nyo. Kaya, ito muna ang tanong ko sa inyo. How can we help? Tayo. How can we help as citizens of the Philippines and as future CPAs? I want you, the audience, to answer. Para sa'yo, what is, how can we help as ordinary citizens, as accountants? Siyempre, we don't have the medical competence to, ano, to face COVID-19. But how can we help in our own special ways as accountants, as future CPAs? And I'm expecting an answer from the Zoom chat and the FB Live. So sana may mag-reply or may mag-sagot, okay? Pero ano, mami, share ko yung way ko. On, 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 on how I help sa COVID-19. Okay, medyo nadidelay. Ano? How can we help as ordinary citizen or as accountants? Ulitin ko, ano, hanggat may, may, may sagot. Guys, sige na, sagot na kayo. By following the same, ayun! One of the simple things that we can do, I'm in a chat dito, by following the safety protocols as citizens, ito yung pinaka-basic thing that we must do. We must follow the safety protocols. Wearing a face mask, face shield, and social distancing is basic rules and regulation. It is not there dahil gusto ng gobyerno. It is there because para sa atin yan. Okay? Ano pa? Yan yung magagawa natin sa citizen. How about us accountants? Ito. Ito ang week, this is what I did recently dahil sa COVID-19. Una, I joined in non-profit organization. Ang nag-join ko ng profit organization is called Landas. Okay? Ngayon, every now and then, dami na nagpo-pop up ng maraming non-profit organization dahil sa iba't ibang problems. Diba? Ngayon, sumali ako sa Landas. Okay? Why? Because, um, I want to help Landas to incorporate as a non-profit organization. I am there by BIR and SEC compliance leader. And that is how I can help them as an accountant. Okay? Imagine, pag yung Landas is officially recognized as a non-profit organization, mas marami na siyang magagawa. Mas marami siyang donation na makakareceive. And dahil dyan, mas marami na siyang matutulungan 
for simply complying with second VAR, ang dami na magagawa. Another thing that I did, I volunteered sa isang barangay dito sa amin. Ngayon, nag-volunteer ako sa ano, when it comes sa accounting side naman, um, ang ginawa ko is kasi is dito sa SAP namin sa pag-distribute ng mga relief goods. Ngayon, ito yung mga problems na face. Ang bagal mag-distribute. Ngayon, tignan ko bakit. Yung pala, kasi sa bawat pagbigay ng relief goods, meron sa isang paper na binibigay, okay? Yung paper na binibigay nila is parang resibo, parang proof na nakareceive sila. So yung internal control nila. But unfortunately, yung paper na binibigay nila is printed, per control number is handwritten. Okay? Handwritten control number. Ilan citizens meron dito? Ilan beses na mag-distribute mag ng relief goods? Thousands. I remember, each and every piece of paper, sinusulatan ng tao. Ang nagsusulat niyan is yung mga nagpapak ng relief goods. Ngayon, kaysa yung mga nagpapak ng relief goods, ay nagpapak ng relief goods, nagsusulat sila sa papel for the control number. Kaya ang ginawa ko, nag-introduce ako ng system kung, kung paano mas madaling gawin. Diba? Sabi ko, ganito yung gawin para mas madali through printing. Tapos pinakita ko sa kanila paano. And dahil dyan, mas nabambilis ang pag-distribute ng relief good and mas mabilis na rating sa ba't ibang tao ang kanilang relief goods. Diba? That is how some ways on how we can help. We can also help clients on advice to them on how, on how can they make their business still afloat. Pero here, ngayon, gusto ko i-concentrate is, one of the things on how we future CPAs can help is through tax. Okay? And dito sa Bainihan 2, nagbibigay sa nang ibang tax incentives. Okay? By simply knowing what are the tax incentives, you can easily make a business stay afloat. Diba? Or at iba dibang benefits. So now, let's go to the main topic. The tax perspectives of the provisions of the Bayanian Hill as 2. Okay? Ang pinaka gusto dito, ano, i-concentrate muna is Section 17. Based on Section 17 of the Bayanian Hill as 2, they repeal the Bayanian 1 Act. Yung unang-unang Bayanian law, wala na yan. Okay? Erase na. Hindi na effective because the Bayanihan 2 replaces the Bayanihan 1. Ngayon, some, some, some of the provisions of Bayanihan 1 is na copy-paste sa Bayanihan 2 with some added benefits, added powers, and added provisions pa. Okay? Ngayon, gusto kong mag-concept muna sa provisions for our health care workers. Okay? Ano yung mga iba't ibang benefits na makuha ng health care workers under Bayanihan 2? For context, ah, dami siya, siya makuha ng, ano, ng the benefits. Pero here, I'm gonna concentrate more on the tax effects or benefit that is connected with tax. Pero here, who is a health worker? Who is considered a health worker? Una, are janitors for a hospital a health worker? Ambulance drivers, are they health workers? Mga receptionists, Health workers ba sila? Obviously, mga doctors, mga nurses, mga medtechs, etc. Obviously, they're health workers. How about other people? Paano yung, yan nga, yung mga administratives, mga nagtatawa sa administrative, are they considered as healthcare workers? The definition of healthcare workers is really, really important. Okay? Bakit? Kasi ito yung term na ginagamit ng Dainia Nilas 2 to specify who can receive this type of benefit. So this is the definition of a healthcare workers. Okay? Siyempre, obviously, a person who are engaged in health-related work. Obviously. Okay? Ngayon, paano mga ibang tao? Sabi dito, sa second definition is all person employed in all hospitals, health centers, rural health, units and barangay cleans, and other health-related um, facilities. Sabi ito, all persons. Wala siya sinabi kung anong kasing person mag magkailan employed. And dito, mas specify niya, including medical, ally, health professional, administrative, and support professional. So, hindi lang pala mga doctors. Kasama rin po dyan ang ating hospital janitors. Kasama rin po dyan ang ating security guards. Kasama rin po dyan ang ating receptionists. So, everyone who is 
who is inside the hospital na nagsusupport sa ano sa ating healthcare workers sa mga frontliners they are entitled to the following benefits una ano unang benefit the covid-19 special risk allowance ito first ang mga receive ng special health allowance is first yung mga workers na nagwo-work sa public and private health sectors okay they do not discriminate on who will receive this special risk allowance they cover everyone from those working in government hospital to the ones working in St. Luke's Hospital. Lahat sila po receive ng special risk allowance. Okay? Pero syempre dito, it is confined to those who are in contact with COVID, sorry, COVID-19 patients. Okay? Kaya mga doctors na nag, let's say, nag, uh, ano, sa ibang department, sa ibang sector, let's say, sa heart disease, syempre, hindi sa mag -ano dyan, Okay? Kasi, ang mabibigay lang ng special risk allowance is, of course, those who are exposed to the COVID-19 patients. Second, this special risk allowance is not the hazard pay. Okay? Makaiba po ang hazard pay sa specialist risk allowance. Okay? Ngayon iba mag-iisip nila na COVID risk allowance is the same as hazard pay. No. This is separate from the hazard pay. Okay? It lands and the land. Okay. Next. Ito yung sad part. It is subject to the present discretion. On the by Nihan Hill as one, may na pong special risk allowance na implement ng president. Nag-order, nag nag-issue siya ng presidential proclamation or presidential ano na sabi na magagan po tayo ng special risk allowance. Pero later, inatyas niya rin. Ni-repeal na rin. Okay? Binawi niya. So, may ilang araw lang tayo nakaroon ng special risk allowance. At yung sad part dito. Again, hindi po po automatic. It is subject to the presence discretion. And ano connect dito? It is exempt from tax. It is one of the few tax exemptions na ibibigay ng Bayanihan Hilas 2. The special risk allowance is tax exempt, okay? Pero, I would just, gusto ko clarify the tax rules for the compensation and hazard pay of our health workers is still the same, okay? Kung yung ordinary tax rules, yan pa apply natin sa hazard pay and salaries ng ating health professionals, okay? Or sa mga health workers. They are still subjected to tax. Pero syempre, again, remember our tax rules. Ngayon itong special risk allowance, as, spe as specifically provided by Nian Nian Hills as to, it is tax exempt. Next, Compensation to health workers. Now, what do I mean by compensation to health workers? I'm not pertaining here to the salaries. Ha? Makaiba po yan. Hindi po yung salaries. Ha? Ngayon, if ever, may isang healthcare worker ay nakaroon ng COVID-19 or nag-contracted ng COVID-19, magbibigay po sa kanila ng, ano, ng, ng compensation. Okay? And magkano? Una, if the healthcare worker contracted COVID-19 and died, unfortunately, sana man wala, it is 1 million pesos. Pag ang kaso nila sa COVID-19 is severe or kaso nila sa critical case, they'll receive 100,000 pesos. But if it is only mild or moderate case, they receive 15,000 pesos. Okay? And of course, this is tax exempt. Okay? So far, may kita nyo, ang, ang benefits na binibigay dito is may iba't ibang allowances and compensation. Okay? And all of these are tax exempt. Okay? Sunod. Ano isa pang measure na ginawa ng Bayanian Hilas 2 para magmakombat ang, ano, ang COVID-19? They provide a provision for human resources for health. Who are they? They are temporary staff. Diba sabi kanina, sober understaff po ang ating ano, ang healthcare facilities natin. Kaya to combat this, ang isa solution is to employ temporary staff or ang, ang tawag natin sa kanila is human resources for health. Now, ano yung gagawin nila? Siyempre, to complement or to, or to supplement medical and allied medical staff. 
So parang uh, sa mga assistant, sila yung tagkaalis kanila, okay? Ngayon, bakit sa in-include ko dito? Kasi syempre may tax implication. At ano yung tax implication nila? They will receive hazard pay. Okay? And yung hazard pay nila is tax exempt. Okay? Pansin nyo. Yung hazard pay nila is tax exempt. Pero sa mga mismo frontliners. Yan lang masasabi ko. Sunod. Yan yung mga ibang benefits na binibigay nila sa healthcare workers. Okay? Ngayon, ano ang masabi nyo? Ano masabi nyo sa, ano, sa, sa, so far, sa benefits na receive nila? Is it fair? Is it sufficient? Is it acceptable? Or do we need more? Hmm. Itadagdagan ba ba natin yung benefits ng healthcare workers? Is it too much? Or okay na? Okay? Ask yourself this, ha? And hopefully, ma, ano, maka-form tayo ng opinion about yun nga, sa provisions ng Binian Hilas 2. Yan yung mga provisions covering the healthcare workers. Now, how about the other areas? Lumayo naman tayo sa healthcare workers. Isa sa mga problems is, syempre, is gusto ng, ano, ng government is mag-procure tayo ng more supplies, more equipment, and more medical goods and essential services, okay? Yan isa sa mga key things that we need in order to combat COVID-19. Ngayon, ano yung incentives meron dito? Una, they'll provide incentives on the following items. First, ay, Una, critical and needed equipment, syempre, for COVID-19. Nang equipment, kundi mas kayo mga goods, mga healthcare equipment and supplies. And bukod dyan, bukod sa supplies and equipment, syempre, essential rin dyan ang waste management, segregation, storage collection, treatment, and disposal services. Bakit? Kasi syempre, after using the equipment, Siyempre, yung mapipiin ng mga healthcare workers, it is infected with COVID-19. Can they simply show it out sa trash can? Pwede ba nila ano, ilagay lang sa trash can, tapos sabi nila, okay, wala na problema. Hindi, ba? All of the equipment and goods and yung supplies sa ginamit nila ng mga healthcare workers are biological hazards. Na, if not disposed properly, lala na problema. Okay. Malay mo, basta sa mga garbage, ano, mga garbage man, nalagahan ng garbage ng hospital, mamaya nakaroon ng COVID dahil sa paghawak ng mga equipment na hindi na-dispose properly. Tapos umuwi siya. Yung mga family niya makaroon ng COVID, di ba? That's why, aside from getting goods, waste management of these goods is also essential. And both na lang na-recognize ng bayanihan too. Next, not only that, they also encourage the imports and raw materials and equipment for the production or production of, of essential goods. In government dito, they do, not, they do not just promote the buying and importation of these goods and equipment, they also promote the production of these goods in our country. Okay? Ngayon, syempre, kasi sisinap yung unahin ng ano ng gobyerno, before looking outside, before they import this needed goods and equipment, syempre, titikin mo muna sila sa, Pilip, sa, ano, sa Pilipinas, di ba? Do we have the capabilities to, to produce our own goods? Syempre, the government will to, to, to do its best to, to, grant, to grant grants and incentives para mas mga kamura and mag-encourage mag yung ng business dito, okay? Parang sabi nila, Filipino first. Ngayon, ang mga incentives nila, ang dami ng incentives, pero dito, I like to concentrate on the tax, okay? Because this is a tax update. They're exempt from import duties, taxes, and other fees. The Binian 2 does not specify what type of taxes, kung VAT, um, donors, donors tax, income tax, etc. Okay? Ito yung mismong wordings nila. Exempt from import duties, taxes, and other fees. Question, what type of taxes ba? Ako, I don't want to interpret it. Okay? Now, to, in order to answer the question, we must wait for the BIR. Okay? Before I give, bago ako magsabi, syempre ako pong karapatan, kasi we must first wait for what does the BIR says, kung anong taxes to. In other words, let's wait for the revenue regulation. Pero dito, meron sa na-implement na control on what goods or equipment ang pwede 
maging subjected sa incentives or grants. Kailangan po siya ng approval and certification ng DTI, BIR, BOC, DNR, and DOH. Okay? Hindi man lahat ta, only some. Not all, but only some ha. Pwede na summarize ko na lang. Okay? At ito yung isa sa mga feeling, parang isa sa mga problem. Kasi sobrang dami ka ng approval will only increase red tapes. And thus, further delaying the release of these goods and granting of their incentives. Hopefully, kahit ang daming certification and approval, mabilis and efficient po ang system na ma-implement para sa pag-certify and approve. Ayan. Next naman, mga utang, mga loans. Siyempre ngayon, wala nang trabaho mga tao. Yung mga businesses nagko-close. Paano sa mga kabayad ng utang, ng loans? Siyempre, dito sa Binihan 2, as halos the same lang as the Binihan Act, they they propose a mandatory, again, a mandatory one-time 60-day grace period. Okay? Again, it is mandatory one time and it is worth 60 days. Mandatory. Sabihin lahat kailangan mag-comply. Kahit sino kaman, lahat kailangan mag-comply. Next, one time. Isang beses mo lang pwede extend yung term. Okay? Isang best man pwede i-extend yung 60 day. Yan yung minimum. Question, can they extend it to 90? For example, yung iba, gusto na i-extend ng 90 days. Pwede ba? Let's say yung iba, gusto na i-extend ng, gusto ko i-extend ng, ano, ng 150 days. Pwede ba? The answer is yes. Because the 60 day grace period is the minimum. Minimum lang po yan, ha? Hindi po pwede bumaba. Pwede ka mag-exceed sa 60 days. Okay? Ngayon, this will pertain to all loans or any part thereof na na-falling na due on or before December 1, 2020, okay? Kaya, pag ang utang mo is due, let's say, bukas, covered siya. Pwede, mo, pwede ka mag-ask ng extension, okay? Kasi again, because it is mandatory, and remember, it is only one time. Ngayon, ano yung tax implication dito? Ang tax implication dito is a DST, Okay? Kasi ngayon sa may mga loan contracts kasi na magiging subjected sa DST. And syempre, pag ano, pag nag-ano git ng bagong loan contract dahil sa 60-day period, ni-recognize ng government yung tax consequences nito. And one of the tax consequences is a DST. Okay? And sabi nila, since mandatory naman yan, syempre, ano, and naman choice, sige, i-exempt natin sa DST. Okay? para mas mga tipid and mas ano mas sure na magko-comply ang mga banks ng financial institutions sa paggrant ng loan extension. Okay? Next, retirement. Noong ano kasi na may day isang araw eh. Sabi ko na ano, "Hoy guys, mag mag ano, mag-retire na kayo." Okay? Sabi ko yan eh, na, ano, na may day ko. Tanong bakit? Kasi, isa sa mga provisions ng Binian Hilas 2 is nagbibigay po siya ng tax exemption sa mga retirement benefits. Okay? Dati, actually in effect point siya ngayon eh. Kaya ang, ano, ang, <laughs> ang basis natin if a retirement benefit is tax exempt is, una, if they follow the 50-10 rule. 50 years, 10 years, ba? And also yung iba like yung pag sa BIR, etc. Dati kasi, not all retirement benefits are exempt from tax. But here, on the Bidenian 2, ang sabi nila, all retirement benefits are exempt from tax. Okay? Pero, what type of retirement benefit? Retirement benefit received between June 5, 2020 to December 31, 2020. Okay? Kaya, pag bahala pa ng retire, do it within this period para tax exempt po ang retirement pay nyo. Okay? Ngayon, syempre, may isa pang rule dito eh. And that is the ay, 12 month rule. Ayun, sorry, medyo na parang technical defect. Ayun. Ayan. The 12 month rule. Ano tong 12 month rule? Tong 12 month rule is from the date of your retirement, for example, ano ba ngayon? Um, September 19. Let's say, ngayon ako nag-retire. Is my retirement pay exempt? The answer is yes. Exempt siya. Ngayon, what if, let's say, next week, mayroong bangong trabaho, 
will it affect my tax exemption? Again, nag-retire ko ngayon. Tapos, three days later, nagkaroon ako ng bagong employer. Nag-apply ulit ako sa bagong trabaho. I mean, it's my retirement pay still exempt? The answer is no. Ang sabi dito, ikaw, hindi pwede basa-basa exempt agad ang retirement benefits. Kailangan, sa pag-retire mo, one year from your retirement, dapat hindi ka ulit magtatabaho. Okay? Bakit? Because if you find a job 12, within 12 months from the date of your resignation or the date from your retirement, edi, to the eyes of the law, as if hindi ka pa retired. Okay? Kaya dyan, gagawin nila, taxable ang retirement benefit. Okay? Again, parang exempt una, dapat mag-retire ka between June 5, 2020 to December 31, 2020. And second, kailangan wag ka pumasok sa bagong trabaho within 12 months after your retirement. Let's say one year later, let's say sa 2022, nagkaroon ng bagong trabaho. Are we still exempt? Yes, exempt pa po ako. Ayan. Ayun, section 4, BBB. I think, ano, sa pag ano nyo, or it's a few weeks ago, may kaya nakita ang post ng DOF ba nag-post na yan na regarding sa NOLCO. Okay? Ngayon, ano yung normal period sa NOLCO? In our normal tax rules, you can claim NOLCO within a period of three years. Okay? For example, ngayon, 2020, nag-incur ako ng net operating loss. I can carry it over for the next three years. So hanggang 2023. Ngayon, ano yung bagong rule? The, bag, the new rule is, it is now 5 years. So, ang null ko ko for this year, based sa old rules, hanggang 2023. Pero sa new rules, hanggang 2025 na po siya. Okay? 5 years na po siya. Ngayon, this is one of the ways para ma-help ng government para makapag-recover ang businesses, okay? By reducing the their tax obligation. Okay? Ngayon, yun nga, extended, but it's subject to limits, okay? It is, this is not an absolute rule that will apply now and forever, okay? This will only apply for the null code that was recognized on 2020 and 2021 only, ha? Huh? So, all null code or all net operating loss that was incurred in 2020 and 2021 is extended for five years rather than three years. Pero null code natin for 2022, 2023, they are still three years, okay? Again, only the net operating loss carryover during the years of 2020 and 2021 is extended to five years, okay? Ngayon, online learning. Isa yung mga problems na face natin ngayon na unfortunately, hindi siya na-cover nung bahay ni Hamilas 1, nung unang bahay ni Anak. But here, as I am reading the, ano, the provisions of the Binian 2, nagulat ako dahil there's a provision pertaining to the procurement of devices, laptops, etc. in the Binian 2. Ngayon, ano yung incentives na dito? Sabi dito, ito yung unang pagkabasa ko. Ay. All personal computers, laptops, tablets, and similar equipment suitable for online learning. Ha? Again, Computers, tablets, and tablets suitable for online learning is exempt from import duties and taxes. Okay? So, sa bawat computer, laptop, and tablet, exempt siya sa taxes. Like VAT, donor's tax, excise tax, import duties, etc. Okay? Ngayon, ano tayo nito? This will bring the, the price of the devices down and mas makatipid. Pero, this tax exemption will only pertain to this wait lang to these devices that were donated to public schools naghanap ako sa law kung ano pa ba yung ibang ibang provisions pa unfortunately ito lang sinabi niya only these devices that were donated to public schools regardless of levels okay so it's be pwede diyan ang elementary senior high school, junior high school, tsaka college, is exempt from donor's tax. Okay? Ganyan, that is the only coverage nito. So dito, they're encouraging 
the donation of this four ano this four items sa public school okay ngayon ito yung tanong how about others how about ma NGOs okay first of all ma NGOs we must remember the rule on donors tax okay donation made to qualified non profit organ non stock non profit organizations are exempt from donors tax okay actually originally um kahit walang bayan yan nila sto ang donation to public school is still exempt okay exempt sa sa donors tax lang ha donors tax lang sa exempt pero dito ano pa kinabang nito dito in expand yung coverage ng, ex ng exemption pero remember it is only for public schools donation to public school to include import duties and taxes okay ngayon puto naman dito sa initial public offering the initial public offering is one of the biggest and most fundamental changes that were that was made sa bayan nila sto and it will affect the board exam from now till or forever ngayon what is the provision of the Bayanihan Hill as to regarding the initial public offering tax or the IPO tax for short? First, uting background lang. The amount of ano tong IPO tax actually unti lang ang inflows na ko ng government. Eh. I think last year mga around million, like as compared to other taxes, sa mga unting millions lang eh. Okay. This initial public offering tax is not a one of the ma major sources of taxes or revenue for the government, okay? And and another thing, initial public offering, hindi siya everyday nangyayari. Minsan-minsan lang, let's say once a month, di ba? Kaya dito, para recognize nila na it is insignificant. And also, this is also a barrier for businesses to enter the stock market, di ba? Kaya dito, ang sabi nila, to encourage business, to further help business recover, let us remove the initial public offering tax, the initial public offering tax starting now. Okay? So, mga accountancy students, kunin yung mga libro nyo tungkol sa, sa tax 2, punta kayo sa page kung may initial public offering tax at tanggalin nyo na. Wala na po initial public offering tax. Less burden for us, <laughs> less taxes that we need to study and thus mas malit na yung buhay natin okay again wala na pong initial public offering tax starting this september okay kaya dito pag mga ano pag mga questions naman sa taxes let's say for example nagbigay ng ano how much is the initial public offering tax remember to look at the date pag ang date niya is around august 2020 and before syempre may initial public offering tax but if the problem states na yung date ng initial public offering o ng IPO is is around November 2020, syempre, automatic, lalagyan natin dyan, zero. Dalawala ng initial public offering tax. Okay? And also, on the side note kasi, um, previously, yung mga revenue regulations ng BIR regarding Bainian Hilas 1, or ano, I want you to see this section. Section 11, Effectivity. Kasi, syempre, mga BIR, nag-issue sila ng revenue regulation ha, about Bainihan, the first Bainihan Act. Upon reading it, hagang sa pinakahuli, makita nyo, it shall be enforced only during the three-month effectivity of RA 11469, otherwise known as a Bainihan Tihilas 1, unless extended or withdrawn by Congress or ended by presidential proclamation. Ngayon, ano nangyari? First of all, um, I think as of now, it's just spend na on revenue regulations regarding sa ano sa Banyan Hilas One, okay? Kaya dito, for me, it is currently ano unapplicable, okay? Ngayon, we must wait kung sabihin ng BIR kung extend nila yung validity ng revenue regulations or mag-issue sila ng bago in line of the Banyan Hilas Two, okay? Here, um, ang lecture ko is not complete, of course. Kasi nga, we need to wait for the final word of the BIR regarding some of these tax rules, regarding some of these clarifications that we need. Okay? I'm simply teaching you this to give you an overview. Okay? Para pag-release ng BIR ng revenue regulation, alam natin what to expect and what 
to find. Okay? Ngayon, again, I ask you this. Based on the solutions provided and benefits na binibigay ng, ano, ng, ng government for the Bayan Hills 2 regarding taxes, is it sufficient? Is it enough? Sobra ba? Remember, sa pagkaroon ng tax exemptions, binababa ang tax revenues ng government, okay? Right now, we are deep needed, we really need money to fund all of these state projects in order to combat by Nihan, in order to combat this COVID-19 and to fund the projects um, initiated by the Bayanian Hilas 2. Ngayon, ito yung question. What is the source of revenue? Um, hindi ako dito nag-include ng slides, ha? Okay? Hindi ako dito nag-include ng slides about that. Pero unting ano lang, unting gist lang of the sources of revenue. Siyempre, um, una yung, ano, yung General Appropriations Act. Pero, ano yung iba't ibang pag-sources ng, ano, ng revenue nila para ma-fund tong Bayanian Hilas 2? First, I'll, or only enumerate some, ha? Taxes collected from gaming or from offshore offshore gaming operations, okay? Lahat ng taxes sa mga casinos, ng mga offshore game operations, like yung, ano ba yung isa? Kaya ba yung tawis ka nila eh? Mga pogos, yun mga pogos. Ang mga taxes na binabayad nila will be one of the sources of revenue in order to fund na buy niya nila as two. Okay? Second, lahat ng BIR and yung Bureau of Customs, may isang revenue target, ba? For example, ang revenue target nila is, let's say, 100 million pesos. Okay? Ngayon, ang second source of our letter to fund this by Nian Gilas 2 is the excess. Okay? For example, ayun nga, 100 million ang, ano nila, ang target nila. Pero ang actual collections nila is 120 million. Yung excess na 20 million, yan yung gagamitin pang fun ng Bayanihan 2 natin. Okay? And I think recently, nakita ko naman sa iba't ibang reports ng ano, on some of the Bay are, ano, is yung iba, nag-exceed naman sila sa, sa collection, ano, sa target collections nila. And I think, ano eh, and I think, may ma may ma may ma papasa naman na pera from this second provision, okay? Don't worry, may dami naman excess na nakolekt na ng taxes, okay? Kaya isa to sa mga ways para mas ano para hindi tayo magutang, ah? And I don't remember some of it dahil ano na yan, di, di yung taxes eh, yung bank sources ng revenue, kaya hindi ko na masyado maalala, okay? So yun, so and that is some of the provisions on the Bayanian Hilas too. So guys, may mga questions po tayo. Do you have any questions so far? FB Live or Zoom? <laughs> may mga questions ba tayo? Wait lang, medyo naghihintay ako. Okay, sa ano? Wala, naghintay ako sa, sa FB Live kasi syempre alam ko man delay naman dito. Tignan natin kung may mga questions dito. Okay. So, I think wala nang masyadong questions. Okay, so far so good. Good. Buti naman. Okay. Ngayon, I'm aware na sa iba dito is now professionals, iba dito is students, okay? Ang lecture ko ngayon is siyempre to give an overview, okay? Pero, remember, isa sa reasons ko ba, we need that to malamit so we can advise, okay, our clients on what they can do to save money, okay? Dito ko to, para ma-advise natin my healthcare workers na anong pwede na maging possible na benefits mo kuha nila para ma-exercise naman nila, di ba? Awareness of the Bayanian Hilas 2 is not just for accountants, okay? But for everyone. Ha? Dito, I only provided the tax provisions, okay? Ngayon, hopefully, some of you will read the full provisions of it. Kasi interesting talaga ang ibang provisions niya. Okay? And with that, I hope everyone will do their part in help combating this virus. And remember to stay at home, wash your hands, Regularly wear your face mask and your face shield, okay? 
This is Remy Manuel Tendon, your tax lecture for the Bainian Hilas 2. And with that, good night and thank you everyone for watching. Okay? And also remember, this is not the last lecture. Okay? Hopefully, in the future, syempre, may mga iba, may, we, we will have more tax update seminars. Okay? So last time I talked about the ano yung lecture all about fringe benefit taxes main by Nia Dilas too and I hope look forward to my next lecture okay again goodbye everyone and have a good day